Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to build strong, robust tendons. As a doctor of physical therapy and strength conditioning specialist, I see a lot of trainers and coaches and athletes who are familiar with how to build muscles, but don't know quite as much about how to build strong and robust tendons. So in this video, that's what we're gonna cover. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Okay, let's start off by talking about the Achilles tendon. We'll also talk about knees and other tendons later. Which of these two approaches would you take to building Achilles tendon strength? Approach number one would include four sets of pogo hops for 20 seconds per set, three sets of 15 standing calf raises, three sets of 10 seated calf raises, and then maybe some soft tissue work for the calf. Or would you take approach number two? Approach number two is five sets of five reps of calf raises, three seconds up, three seconds down, as heavy as you can load them and still complete the full repetition. Both of these approaches may sound good, but approach number one really doesn't reach meaningful enough loads to move the needle on improving tendon properties, and that's what a lot of people are doing. When it comes to building tendon properties, this is really important. Moderate loads are not enough to meaningfully improve tendon properties. Let's take a look at this quote from a recent research article. Plyometric training and fatiguing training with moderate loads shows clear effects on muscle strength and hypertrophy yet lower, less consistent, or even no effect on the stiffness of the tendon. What this is showing us is that the approach that we use to strengthen our muscles is not going to help us necessarily strengthen our tendons. So for example, doing three sets of 10 standing calf raises, or oftentimes you'll see 10 calf raises with the toes forward, the toes out, and the toes in, this approach probably is not enough load to meaningfully improve tendon properties. And this is why we see people with recurrent Achilles tendon issues over and over again getting injured every year or every season and never really building a strong, robust Achilles tendon. That said, it is important to mention you will need an entry point if you are injured. So maybe you're injured and you can only handle body weight calf raises. That's fine as a starting point but we wanna make sure that entry point to rehab is not the same as your exit point to rehab weeks later. We shouldn't just do a home exercise program with three sets of 10 standing calf raises for a bunch of weeks and then expect to see meaningful improvements to tendon properties. We need to establish that appropriate entry point but also make sure that we're targeting a high enough exit point that involves high loads through the tendon so we can actually meaningfully improve tendon properties. The way that we do that is with something like heavy, slow resisted calf raises, like we said earlier, five sets of five, three seconds on the way up, three seconds on the way down, slow and controlled with a really heavy challenging load. There's nothing magic about doing these slow and controlled calf raises, it's just that we need to deliver really high loads through the Achilles tendon and doing slow controlled heavy reps is one really good way to do that. We could also use a protocol like for example, six sets of eight seconds of isometric holds with a really high load. Whether we're using isometrics or heavy slow resistance, that doesn't really matter as much as the fact that we are delivering really heavy loads through the tendon to actually get those tendon changes. Now there are a lot of reasons that people aren't doing this. A lot of this research is actually recent and we previously thought that maybe doing moderate loads or a bunch of reps would improve tendon properties, but a lot of this research is from 2020 and beyond, so it hasn't necessarily gotten out to everybody yet and made its way into the main training protocols. It takes time for new information to get out there and to get updated. Luckily though, you can help by smashing that like button and subscribe button to share this new information with other people just like you who are looking for it. Another concern you may have is are these high loads safe for these exercises. When it comes to Achilles tears, we actually see Achilles tears occurring with very fast rates of loading, not from very high forceful slow loading. So doing slow controlled, very forceful reps is safe, but you do still wanna build up to those high loads over time. Again, we still need to establish that starting point. Maybe that is just body weight calf raises or even seated calf raises, but we wanna make sure that we're building up to high enough loads to make meaningful changes over time. Okay, now let's talk about the knee and the patellar tendon. Just like with the Achilles tendon, we need to establish a starting point for loading. That could be an isometric, like a wall sit or a Spanish squat or something like that where we're doing a longer duration hold. These 30 second, 40 second holds are generally more well tolerated early if you're having pain already. That said, over time, we wanna make sure that we're delivering higher loads to that tendon to actually make meaningful changes. With the knee, we can do this a number of different ways. One, we could add more load by adding more weight. 
Two, we could actually increase the load by pushing the knees over the toes to increase the load on the patellar tendon. This is not a bad thing. Increasing the load through that tendon, as long as we're doing it progressively and strategically, can actually be very beneficial for building the capacity of that tendon to handle more load. This means that knees over toes guy was actually onto something here, and those knees over toes exercises can be very beneficial as long as you're progressive in how you build up to them. For example, I think hack squats as well as knees over toes split squats can be a great way to build up the capacity of the patellar tendon. For these exercises or any other exercises that you're using to build up your tendon strength, you want to be progressive in both intensity and volume, meaning that you want to start with your knees farther back, maybe over your ankle, and then progressively work to where your knees are farther over your toes. That would increase the intensity of the exercise and the load through the patellar tendon over time. You also want to increase the load gradually in terms of the weight that you're using for the exercise. Lastly, we want to be progressive with volume, meaning that you may start with just four or five reps for a few sets, for example, three sets of five, and then build up over time to three sets of eight, three sets of 10, as you can handle more volume of training. There's always a balance between adding more volume of training versus adding more intensity. So a good way to do this is to work up to three sets of 10. And then when you get there, add more weight to the exercise. So that way you can only do five reps and then build your volume back up again. For example, doing unloaded split squats, building up to three sets of 10, and then adding dumbbells to that knees over toes split squat, and then building back up again. The key here is to be progressive. If 24 to 48 hours after your training session, you have more pain, that could be an indication that you overdid it and need to dial back again. The last point that I wanna address is plyometrics. Plyometrics are good for improving tendon properties, but we're not improving them in the same way as we are with strength exercises. Plyometrics are more specific to tendon extensibility, which is an important part of sport movements like running and jumping. I think these should be used hand in hand with strength exercises. The strength exercises with heavier loads are a bit more specific to building strong, robust tendons that can handle higher loads. And those pair really well with plyometric exercises to improve your extensibility of the tendons. So I definitely don't wanna give the impression that for example, pogo hops are bad or you shouldn't be doing them. It's just that those should be used in conjunction with high load movements. So overall, you can apply this to any different tendon in the body. If there's one we haven't addressed, feel free to drop it in the comments. Just remember to include a high load movement so that way we can actually move the needle on tendon properties as well as a progression for plyometric exercises if appropriate for that muscle group. So we can keep extensibility of the tendon as well. And in combination, that will give us the most strong and robust tendon properties. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and drop them down in the comments below. Make sure you're following along on Instagram as well at The Movement System. Subscribe so you don't miss any future videos and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.